the Charlotte Hornets getting back. Now let's see if the Wizards can get back on defense. Brandon in the game, he was on the bench. That bad dude who murdered Gafford right there is Brandon Miller. You've probably known him as the guy who got picked in between the third overall pick Scoot Henderson and first overall pick Victor Wembanyama in the recently held draft. But see, Brandon Miller isn't just the guy. He's a six foot nine lengthy forward with a seven foot one wingspan in his back pocket. And as you saw in the opening clips, he's athletic as hell and can get up there with the best of them. I know that the 2023 draft is mainly about Wemby and the hype that is built around him. But in today's video, I want to specifically focus on the second overall pick, Brandon Miller, and talk about why you shouldn't sleep on this 20-year-old kid. Now, obviously, his biggest strength as far as his game is concerned is his scoring ability. And in the last eight games, Miller showed glimpses that he can score on all three levels, starting from hitting buckets from downtown. So as the shot clock winds down, Hayward draws a couple of bodies as he slices his way inside before spraying it out to Miller. Miller then attacks the closeout, but since the clock is about to expire, he just pulls back and settles for a tough step back J in the corner. His ability to hit tough buckets was also evident thus far this season, and that's definitely a huge plus to a team like the Hornets, which doesn't have that many shot creators in their lineup. Now, going back to his three-point shooting, Miller also showed that he can confidently step into threes coming off screen with just a bit of daylight. And it's also worth noting that he has a nice base and a smooth follow-through when he's launching his shot. Miller scored double digits in his first five games in the NBA, showing that he has the potential to become the third or fourth scorer behind LaMelo and Terry Rozier. I also love the fact that he has a sweet mid-range game to complement his three-point shooting. And what's impressive about Miller is that he can hit those 15 to 18 foot jumpers, regardless of whether he's going to his left or right. Here's an elbow, pin down action set for Miller. And after curling off the Williams screen, Miller was able to hit this shot on the run while drifting to his left. In this sequence, Miller was able to create a separation by going to his right using that right side step made famous by the likes of CP3 and DeMar DeRozan. Now, if Miller gets denied going to his sweet spot, he has the footwork to counter the defense. And in this instance, he went for a spin to create a little bit of a separation before dropping the 12 foot bucket. And here, Buddy Heald was able to shut down the strong hand drive, but watch how Miller escapes this one with a reverse pivot, then making the short fader. Among all the rookies this season, Miller ranks third in scoring with 13 a ball game behind Wemby and Chet Holmgren, and he also places at the eighth spot when it comes to three-pointers made averaging 1.1 per game. With the impressive set of physical tools that he has, Miller can easily shoot over small defenders because of his big frame. But one area where he takes full advantage of his length and size is whenever he gets downhill and goes all the way to the cup. Here's Miller going up one-on-one -on -one against the runner-up of last season's Defensive Player of the Year race in Mikhail Bridges. After giving him a fake jab step, he just blew right by him, and even if the help defenders show up, he just glides in the air using his athleticism and finishes this one with a scooping layup. Coming off the baseline, Miller is also capable of taking the hit and has the body control to finish shots through contact. And if he has a clear runway going to the rim, Miller will not hesitate to put people on his own poster, just like what he keeps on doing against Gafford this season. Now, offensively, Miller really looks pretty solid overall as he can deal damage coming from different looks. But as good as he is right now in putting up buckets, what really caught my attention with regard to his game is his ability to read defensive schemes on the fly and be a willing passer when need be. Miller once again gives Bridges a fake jab step going to his right before exploding to the left. Now, as soon as he sees that Simmons is not in a proper guarding position, he just throws a nice lob pass to the 7'1 Mark Williams for the easy dunk. Now, in the first eight games, Miller also showcased his basketball IQ, as well as his vision in some plays by making passes coming from tough angles. So Miller pulls back here to reset. He then uses the screen set by Williams to create an attacking angle and go downhill. But when he saw Hayward sneaking behind the defense coming from the baseline, he just whips a nice left-handed pass to him for an and-one finish. 
Without much of a doubt, Miller can definitely light up the scoreboard on any given night. Whether it's about putting buckets from a distance, mid-range, or inside the shaded lane, and as you saw in the previous clips, he can also dish it out to open guy when the defense sets their attention on him. But the thing that really excites me about this kid is his scary potential on the defensive end with the length and the kind of athleticism that he possesses. I mean, his 7 foot 1 wingspan is really the difference maker when he's defending. Off the brush screen set by Gafford, Poole quickly turns the corner to put Miller in a bad defensive position. However, because of his reach and insane hops, Miller was able to recover in time as he slapped this one against the backboard. Now, though he's not directly involved in the play, Miller would make his defensive presence felt by simply swatting away shots as a weak side helper. In this transition attack, look at how he tails Cam Thomas from behind, and as soon as he took the shot, Miller was there yet again to spoil his attempt as he times this one perfectly. And lastly, I love the fact that he's really active around the court and has built a habit of crashing the boards when his defender is not putting a body on him. If you lay out his defensive numbers, you can see that he's actually doing quite well against his fellow rookies as he ranks in the top 10 on both rebounds and blocks, while settling at the 11th place in terms of steals with 0.6 a ball game. In my opinion, Brandon Miller is the best two-way wing in his draft class outside of Ausar Thompson, because even though Ausar has a bit on the edge defensively, his offensive game isn't as polished as Miller's just yet. Now, the other reason for this is that he kinda drew influence and patterned his game to one of the greatest wing players in this generation, which is Paul George. When Miller dropped by in PG's podcast, he admitted that he's been studying his game and stealing his moves for a long time now. In terms of the eye test, PG and Miller are kind of have cut from the same cloth. Both are lengthy wings standing around 6 foot 8 with 7 foot wingspans that can play on both ends. And if PG is going to be Brandon Miller's ceiling, then the Hornets will definitely be a contender in the East if this scenario really plays out in the future. Well, speaking of the current Hornets, they're still finding their way this season, but the upside of it is that they're getting scoring contributions from almost everywhere as six Hornets players right now are logging in double digits in scoring, with Miller being the sixth best scorer of the team averaging 13 points a ball game. Now, obviously, Miller is not going to be the secondary or even third scoring option for this team, with Terry Rozier, Gordon Hayward, and P.J. Washington still lurking around. But what he can do is embrace his role coming off the bench and thrive as their sixth man for now. Anyway, while he's showing a lot of positives when he's given some floor action, Miller has been in a shooting slump as of late and is pretty inconsistent shooting-wise, as he only averages 10.4 points on 11.1% shooting from distance. With this said, he needs to work on his shooting mechanic to become an effective catch-and-shooter on kickouts, as well as coming off the dribbles. And apart from this, he also needs to bulk up and add more muscles, because I noticed that there were instances when he was unable to finish an easy shot, just because he got bumped or thrown out of balance. But then again, these can be easily fixed as he's just starting out and he'll eventually get the hang of things as he keeps playing more and more through the season.